coach, you said on Saturday that you were going to learn a lot about your team based on, you know, the performance from the first half to the second half. After looking at the film, what what did you, what have you learned about your squad? We're really good on defense. Um, we play extremely hard. Uh, we're very physical. And obviously, you know, y'all probably get tired of hearing about the triangle of toughness. That's where we always start. Every meeting, uh, that's where we begin. And second, uh, we, we have become a team that's committed to running the football, and uh, we run it well. Uh, we've been, at times, very explosive in the passing game, and at times, we haven't been. Uh, we got to get more consistent. Uh, I'd say we're a, a good offense. Uh, we've done a lot of good things. We've helped contribute to a lot of our success this year. But there's probably more room for improvement uh, with that unit on just being more consistent. Uh, special teams-wise, uh, we've got really uh, good kicker, a really good punter, a re good return guys. Uh, but we've got to be more consistent. When we don't hit a good punt or we don't hit a good kick, we really pay for it. Uh, we've got to be better in our coverage units, and we can't be so dependent on a great kick or a great punt. Uh, if we don't ever hit the ball where we're supposed to hit it, we pay for it. So I'd say that pretty much sums up each unit. Uh, as a team, uh, we believe in each other. We have a strong belief system in our culture. Uh, and we've now played in 28 straight competitive quarters. I mean, literally 28 quarters where – uh, every play was the difference in a, a, a win or a loss for 28 straight quarters, which is pretty, pretty remarkable. On the play of your defensive line, is it fair to say that that group has been dominant at times? And then if so, how have they been so good? Well, we, it always starts with players and, and we've got quite a few good players in there. Uh, I think coach Wright does a really good job of rotating them. You know, we, we play six to seven kids every game, and we have played as many as nine in a game. And uh, so depth, players, effort, buying into the culture, um, it's always a combination of those things. Okay, Greg. Jeff, how you doing today? I'm good, Greg. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm wondering if you got a chance to check in with Sincere McCormick much since Saturday and just to see how he's feeling physically after the, the workload that he took in that game. What have you gathered in that sense? He's awesome. He's in my office the very next morning just laughing and, and just he's in great spirits and bouncing around here. You, it's unbelievable. The kid is mentally tough, physically tough. He loves San Antonio. He loves his university. He loves his teammates. And that's just who Sincere McCormick is. Obviously, there was a lot of focus on him after the game, and rightfully so with the performance he had. But what did you make of uh, Frank Harris's play, especially kind of down the stretch, making some uh, difference-making plays to help you guys pull off the win? Yeah, there was, there was a few plays that were very critical. The quarterback's job is to lead his team to a victory, and that's what Frank did. So that's what's most important. Um, you know, the scramble he made during the four-minute drive, uh, uh, that was a tough play he made. Uh, the fourth down uh, where Juju threw it back to him, uh, that was another tough hit he took to get that first down. Um, it, his execution of speed option down there uh, for a touchdown. There's a lot of things Frank did very well. Uh, when you play quarterback and you leave some throws out there on the field or you make a couple of interceptions, you know, that – that's, that's hard on young men, uh, and he took that very hard. He even, I think, spoke to you guys about it. Um, but I was just proud of the way he bounced back and competed, and it was just frank. And at the end of the day, that's what we can't ever forget. Um, a quarterback's job is to lead his team to victory. That's his job. By one point, it doesn't matter. It still goes in the left column of the, of the W column. That's what's most important. Was there something that was missing or that he wasn't doing earlier in the game to, to not have that same success that he found later on? 
No, I don't want to make excuses for him uh, because he, you know, he knows what he has to do. But you know, he needs to he needs to play consistently, like get reps. You know, it's hard when you've had to miss the amount of time he's missed. And I think the more he plays, the better he'll get. Uh, just like with any quarterback, he just has to keep getting plays. And every time you play a defense, they're a little bit different. Personnel's a little different. Their scheme's a little bit different. And the only way you get that, Greg, is by actually playing the game. And there's no other position harder to play in all the sports than that one. You need to go play it a lot. That's how you get good at it. Okay, Kobe. Hey, Jeff. Kobe Price, the FAU beat writer for the South Florida Sun Sentinel. Nice to meet you. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me on. Thanks for letting me in your uh, your Zoom press conference meeting. Wanted to ask about uh, what stood out to you so far. I know FAU's only played two games so far up to this point, but what have you taken away from their couple of games they've had? Uh, well, you can tell y'all are used to winning. Uh, your kids play very hard. Um, defensively, you're physical and run to the football. Um, offensively, you always starts with everybody's quarterback and y'all got a good quarterback, got good skill kids. And uh, it's just, you can just tell you're playing a team that's used to winning. Uh, that's, that's what I see when I watch video. Uh, just, I, I say it all the time that, you know, you got to look like a winner and act like a winner before you can ever be a winner. And you can tell FAU's won a lot of games. Um. When you say that, what is that? How does that translate, I guess, on the field in terms of you look like a winner? How does that look uh, in terms of on field style of production? Just the way y'all carry yourselves, the way your kids have confidence, um, just the way they run around. You can just you can just watch video, and when it looks like a bunch of ants scaring around everybody real fast, those kids are used to playing hard and winning ball games. And, that's what y'all look like, a bunch of kids that are used to winning football games. Appreciate it. Thank you. JJ? Jeff, what's your overall impression of Conference USA? I, I know it's still early in the conference season, but what, what do you think about what's going on in this conference, specifically in the West Division? I don't ever look, JJ. I got Chapter 8. It's got FAU written on it, and uh, I got – JJ and Greg, that man, you guys are gonna always be on top of that stuff. I don't have to worry about it. I know y'all will let me know, or y'all will let Kyle know, and Kyle will let me know. I, I promise you, I don't look up. I, I wouldn't know one standing from anybody. I don't even know anybody's record. Uh, I know a lot about FAU, but that's about where I would be. That'd be the last thing I'd be able to comment on right now, JJ. And I'm being totally sincere. No coach talk there. I, I've not looked up. Was there any concern about? you know, this game being played because of the issues FAU has had with COVID and, you know, they, they haven't played many games. Has, has there any been any concern on y'all's end? Uh, I'm concerned about my on our end. I'm nervous every time. I was concerned this morning about the test. I'm always nervous about that test. I think anybody in college football this year is worried about every game. Uh, I, I literally, I've said this to you guys before, when I put my headphones on, and I see the ball in the air. I say to my coaches each week, well, we're playing again this week, boys. And uh, I think there's only – help me here. I know y'all will know this better than me. I think we're only one of two teams that have played every game straight through. Uh, I could be wrong on that. Uh, but I, somebody told me that. Y'all might want to fact check me on that. So we're blessed that we played as much as we have, J.J. Okay, Chris, you're up. Hey, Coach. This is Chris Hummer. I work with JJ at 24-7 Sports on the national side of things. Thanks for having me on. Well, you need to – when the Braves lose and the Cowboys lose and the runners lose and he, like, disappears for a while, just come on here and just let me, let, just let me know he's okay. I was really worried about JJ there for that week. I'll have to I'll have to let you know. I'm sure he was in a real tough time right there. It's a tough has he even day. Has he even mentioned the Braves? Where's the Braves cap? I haven't seen it in a while. Has anybody seen that cap lately? I'm just curious. JJ just had to hide it behind his couch, man. Dodgers <laughs> playing now for the rest of the year. But, uh, 
Anyway, thanks so much. Um, I'm working on kind of a bigger picture thing on Sincere. Um, I'm just kind of wondering, he's from right down the road. Um, what sort of, this might be too broad, but what sort of symbol built slash building block is he for the program as you kind of help to establish your vision, especially within Texas? Huge. I, there's so many though, like Marcus Davenport this morning, you know, Marcus has been very supportive of us and you follow him on Twitter. He's keeping up with us. And, uh, you know, you know, my son coaches for the Saints. So uh, Jordan gets to talk to Marcus all the time. And, I actually put him on my Twitter this morning about why I leave the 210 when you can get everything you want. You want to get to the National Football League, but yet build your own brand in your own city. And uh, that's what Sincere McCormick believes as well. Um, he talked to me about it yesterday. Uh, him and Rashad and Frank, those guys, uh, Spencer, Hunter Duplessis, those guys take great pride and that they chose to stay in the city. And they can tell we're building something. They can tell we're moving this thing in the right direction. And, uh, you know, Coach Brown, who I hired uh, as our DFO, was one of the original coaches here. He speaks of that original 18 all the time, those first 18 kids that helped build this thing from the very beginning. I think those are very unique. It's very rare you get an opportunity to really build a football program. I mean, think about that. The, the, the bloodhounds of college football have been around for hundreds of years or a hundred years where here you're literally getting to build it and sincere and Marcus Davenport, Rashad wisdom. They, they take great pride in that. And that's why we really wanted that two one Oh brand. We speak of all the time, the triangle of toughness. Uh, we're going to make the big deal out of that in our new facility we're building right now. Those numbers, those single digit numbers, those two one Oh numbers are going to always be something very important here at this place. And uh, sincere is all about that. Okay, Greg. Jeff, how much of a lift was it for you to get Spencer Burford back on the offensive line this week? Did that make a big impact for you guys? No doubt. Uh, whenever you lose your left tackle, that was painful to go through. And it's, it's not uh, such a knock on any individual. We just can't keep the same five out there for communication purposes. And once again, if you study the video, we had a lot of miscommunication. Uh, we just are playing so many kids. And I'm not trying to make a soft bed for my kids. Uh, it's just we'd like to get some consistency there. So I'm very proud of all those kids that keep stepping in there each week. And uh, I'm a huge Cowboy fan like JJ. And you can, you can see what that looks like when you change that lineup up a bunch. It can get really scary up there. Uh, I tell you all the time, you know, that's, that's where the game is. We watch the football so much. If you don't watch the ball, that's where the game's won and lost. The, the latest one we saw, uh, Kevin Davis seemed a little bit banged up in this game. Do you think he's going to be good to go, or is there more shuffling ahead for you guys on that unit? I hope so. You know, yesterday is a big treatment day for us. Today's their day off. So, we, we know, we'll, we'll start practicing again tomorrow. Uh, he's a really tough kid. He's an older kid. Um, I'm sure he'll try to go. If not, we have created quite a bit of depth. Uh, we expect to get Meech back this week. Dom's starting to get healthier, too. So we're we're starting to pick up some pieces, Greg, that we've been without for the last couple of weeks. So we, it's just been that way all year. You just – you coach. I feel bad when Kyle asks for the lineup each week. I'm like, here, give it to him. But who knows what – it'd be interesting to go back this year and just see, like, the ones we turn in, what the percentage that's actually been correct. You know, I know a lot of coaches intentionally hide stuff, but – this just keeps changing. Everybody in the country just is a different lineup on Saturday than what you might have planned on even Thursday or Friday. And the interesting thing with Spencer coming back, it seemed like he sort of sat out the first couple possessions for you guys and then started to get more involved. And I know I like the week before with Jalen Haynes, it was the same thing. Is that kind of your philosophy with guys coming back to sort of ease them into the game or how does it sort of work out that way? Every situation is different. You know, Pretty much as a rule, if you don't practice on Tuesday or Wednesday, you should not let kids play on Saturday. Well, this year, all the rules are off because you got kids that get to return for other reasons. Who knows what, Thursday, Friday. It's just a different year, Greg. So there's not like a cookie-cutter answer like coaches like there to be. 
this season is just so different. I just think we have to use as much common sense, be flexible, not punish children for things they can't control, uh, especially if they're healthy. That's a, that's a tough call that coaches, this is just different uh, than we've ever had to deal with before, Greg. Okay, Chris, back to you. Yeah, hey, sorry if I cut out earlier. Um, just to follow up on Sincere, um, he was a reasonably under-recruited kid from a really historic program in the state, um, was a record holder at Converse Jetson, obviously. What does his presence say about kind of the undervalued talent that can still be found in this state outside of maybe what some of the blue buzz you mentioned earlier seem to mine every year? That's why I'm so excited about the job, honestly. I think San Antonio is one of the most under-recruited areas in our state. Um, and we, we plan on starting here. And that's where we're going to hopefully the majority of our roster will come from. You know, when I took the job, we had 11 on the roster. We're up to 25 right now. And I know I've said this a lot, but I'm, I'm a simple creature. So we, we're going to try to have five to seven every year we sign. We're going to try to get five walk-ons to seven every year from this area. So if we can get 10 to 12 to 14 kids each year on our roster from the 210, and they're really good players, uh, that Alamo Dome is going to fill up pretty quick because the community is going to come watch them because there's going to be more people tied to them. Uh, now, we didn't know we were going to be on national TV seven times in a row in, the, in a year of a, a pandemic, which has hurt our crowd tremendously. Uh, but when we get – uh, hopefully we stay on national TV, but they'd rather come down, you know, to a 2.30 kick, maybe have a good uh, concert after the game in the Alamo Dome, cruise on over to the Riverwalk, have a margarita or whatever your choice of drink is, a glass of sweet tea and some, some uh, salsa and some chips. I, I, I'd sign up for that. and I, We're going to recruit to that and uh, try to get our city excited about the brand of ball we play uh, with some homegrown kids. And I, 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 the, the, the future here to me is extremely, extremely exciting, and I can't wait to be a part of it. I've heard much worse pitches than a margarita after a football game on the Riverwalk. So. Well, I, I'm also in the Bible Belt, and my mom would probably spank me right now. For <laughs> I meant, well, isn't there a margarita without any alcohol? Yeah, the non-alcoholic margaritas. Thank obviously. you. That's yeah. the one yeah. I was referring to, Mom, if you're listening. Okay, Greg. Jeff, you guys, uh, you got Ty Key back into the mix this week. How did his return help your offense? What did that do for you guys? I'm just so proud of him. Uh, culture speak again. You know, he's really bought in. Uh, he's just done a lot of much better work off the field, and uh, which got him rewarded to get on the field. And his ability to play football has never been the question. His nickname is Potential. I call him that all the time because I, I, we know the definition of potential around here is everything that you're not. And Ty Key's tired of hearing me say that. And I challenge him every day about it. Every single day in the stretch line, I, was, I say, what's up, Potential? And uh, he doesn't like it. I love the young man. I want him to be all that he can be. And he could bring something very special to our team. And I think we've got him moving in the right direction. Uh, he won the Triangle of Toughness Award this week, which is a – prestigious honor around here and uh, I, I hope chapter eight for him in the book was is even better than chapter seven was for Taiki. What are those final steps that he has to take off the field to meet everything you want with the culture or to be at that standard you're looking for? Yeah just uh, you know discipline you know just taking care of the, the little things you take care of the little things in life the big things in life will take care of themselves he's got to take care of the little things the devil's in the details. And, uh, boy, when you're that age, that's tough to swallow. I didn't like learning it. And uh, luckily I had some guys that stuck by me and mentored me through some of those times in my life. And we want to be that for these young men as well. Were those things off the field part of the reason we didn't see him sooner, or was it an injury situation he was coming back from through the year? Uh, both. Both things were uh, factors in that. He told me, we, I talked to him before the season last year, and he mentioned that sometimes he struggles with, like, nerves and pressure within a game getting ready. Have you seen any of that from him? How do you see him handle those sort of things? Um, 
you know, this is the first time I've ever got to see him play. So he didn't look very nervous to me Saturday. He looked pretty good to me out there. So he has not expressed that to me yet. Maybe that's a maturity thing he's kind of dealing with, but um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll ask him about that. When he's totally right, does he bring a different dynamic to your offense just because of his height at 6'4"? Is that a different kind of weapon, and how can that open things up for you guys? Yeah, no doubt. He's large, but his run after catch is also really good for a man his size. So that's, that's also an element. Um, you want to walk up and press him, and then you can throw the ball up to him. But when you bail off of him and cushion, he has the ability to break a route or use his stiff arm and pick up extra 15, 20 yards. So – there's no doubt. We, we feel good about our receiving core. Josh Stevens continues to play well, as does the Zakari. So uh, he just adds another weapon out there. Uh, we know we can run the ball well. We've got to expand on our passing game and continue to get better throwing the ball down the field and high points and balls. And let's, let's get some, uh, some of those easier touchdowns instead of all those 12, 14 play drives. Changing gears here, I have one of your favorite kind of questions this week. It was uh... – Second quarter play, it was a third and seven, and you guys could have accepted the penalty to move it to the 38 at third and 17. Instead, you declined, and so they kicked the field goal from the 28-yard line on fourth and seven. Was there like a thought process there where you considered moving them back, or what went into that decision? I was so mad we had given the ball in such a short field. I literally was like, I'll take the three. I mean, it could be much worse, and uh, – that was my decision in, in, a, in a nutshell. Um, but it was a very, it's a very fair question. Those are the things you have to consider. Uh, there, there was a lot of those calls in that game, way too many. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm really glad we were four for four on fourth down because I knew I was going to be getting the Greg Lucas uh, questions on my fourth down. So I was very glad they all worked. No, I'm a big go for it on fourth and short. Hey, there you go. It's in my corner, JJ. I'm glad to know that. <laughs> Hey, and we punted the ball out of bounds on the last <laughs> punt. And I wanted I needed somebody to say it. Y'all got all over me for Texas State. And you should have. You should have. Right, right. I guess one last thing we can clean up. Uh, you mentioned two weeks ago that it was eight guys against Army who were out because of the COVID protocols. It seemed like the roster was a little bit more full this week. What was the count for this weekend, and how do you guys look with that going forward? We think if we can pass our test this week, um, we'll have them all on the sideline. They might not have practiced very much this week, but they're going to be on the sideline. How many were you guys down against Louisiana Tech? You know, that's a great question. Uh, I would say seven, I believe. Uh, I think we had one back and seven still out, uh, possibly two back. Uh, but we expect all eight to be back. Um, this Saturday. Now, obviously, we're traveling on the road, so our travel roster size will be down. So you might not see, you know, the eight. You know, I imagine you'll see five or six of the eight uh, on the trail. Anything else for Coach Turley this morning? <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate y'all, man. God bless. Birds up.